today's event under the green affordable housing ecosystem in India is a very timely one to gather all the partners to bring in the best knowledge. So we look forward and uh, we hope that uh, the best practice could be drawn through these lessons. We all are interconnected. Any slippage on part of any country, any community is going to affect totally different community in totally different country. So as a Kutum, as a one single family, we are actually fighting to ensure that our energy requirements actually reduce. In the rest of the world, green buildings, highly energy efficient buildings, comprise about a quarter of all the green bond market, a much higher proportion than in India. You know that you make it compulsory that at least for new housing, unless you have an energy efficiency certificate, as it is there in the UK, in London, if you want to buy a home today, you, you can't sell a home or you cannot rent a home unless it has a minimum certificate of energy. So I think our dreams would get fulfilled when a prospective customer goes to the builder and says, green hai kya? Kitana green hai? I think that day we would have achieved what we are inspiring for. We are promoting star rating of buildings and that will give incentive to the developers and added advantage to the developers that if they are selling the star rated home, then it's a quality home. You know, it was a tool which was used to evaluate buildings in the Indian context. That's very important. We did not adapt it from the, you know, from some other code. That became the benchmark. And then you started evolving it over time. AAC is being manufactured by hundreds of organizations, but their properties uh, are changing, you know, and we are also coming out with better, better products to conform to the uh, requirements of uh, Indian standards and also international standards. We need demonstration projects because all lenders need quantified information. When you do this, when you use this material, you reduce the energy demand by X percent. So if a defined event happens, then they get certain payout. They don't lose the whole exposure that they have. We are working with institutions like IIFL and other housing finance companies on reaching those end customers. And IIFL itself is doing a lot of good work with uh, Kutum and other awareness raising activities. Very likely, it's going to be the second and third tier cities that much of the urban growth is going to happen. Do you see the potential of research programs that focus on this potential? Since we got a dependence amount of money which we have spent in the research for buildings and cities, can we really count? Probably it might not be more than 500 crores over the last 70 years. I can really put the numbers. And another important point is industry partnership. And that's where we also see one of the biggest challenge, at least in building architecture departments or civil engineering, is a credibility gap between uh, academics and industry. Industry simply does not want to understand that, oh, professors can do something, and professors simply don't want to understand what industry wants. How do we, as academicians, researchers, communicate in a language that it can be understood and uh, adopted is critical. And then, not stopping there, how can that actually get converted into a practice for impact is important. Co-production is the way forward for going in this direction where we bring the research and its impact into policy and practice. What is the desired future? The desired future obviously is clean air, clean water. We don't have to buy water, we can drink it from any tap and a place full of biodiversity. These are the future which we need and as individuals, how do we design that future with everybody and everything in mind.